Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. And we got a very important topic today. We're going to talk about how to build wealth for your business long-term, but also probably more importantly, how to avoid burnout at the same time and balance those two things. If you go all wealth, you're going to be burnt out. If you go all avoid burnout, well, you may have no money. So let's figure out how to balance those two, make money in our business and keep it long-term. We have a very special guest with us today, Ryan DeRusso. And before we go any further, Ryan, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So this is a, it's a unique topic because you added that avoid burnout piece, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think a lot of uh, financial planners, financial coaches, uh, anybody talking about money, they just want to focus on the money. But you've right. also brought in this very important piece of, well, you can't make money if you're burnt out. So give me, give me a sense of, of what you help your clients with. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So like I work with a lot of private practice therapists and what that means is they have what they term butt in seat and they have butt in seat hours and that's how they make their money. And what happens is first year, hey, they might feel really good about that their business as it's growing. Second year, they really see a jump in success. But by the third year, that sort of butt in seat hour starts to really grind on them. And that's the sort of burnout uh, long term. And, you know, there is a financial aspect to it, because if you get burnt out and you can't work as many hours or, you know, you want a new job, I've had to run scenarios for people who cannot imagine having another hour in seat and wondering if maybe they should do like DoorDash orders or something like that, just to avoid like another hour in front of a client. And so that is a long term financial drain if you let it sort of fester. And so part of, you know, when I'm working with clients is one sort of figuring out what they can do right now, but also what's that balance between like what they're doing and uh, how much they can handle. That's crazy. That That's, I mean, that example blows my mind that yeah. we're going to go from somebody who um, I would assume in this context makes pretty good money on mm -hmm. paper and they're thinking about DoorDash as yeah. an alternative. I mean, they're making six figures, right? Um, and they, you know, one thing, I, you, you're probably self-employed in what you do here, so you know about estimated taxes. And um, one thing that really drains them is sort of, how much can I pay in estimated taxes? How much do I pay myself? And then what happens is they're so cautious about paying themselves that they that let the credit card debt rise and these other things rise. And so they haven't created sort of the balance flow or cash flow between their business and themselves. Meanwhile, their credit balances are rising. And so they're looking for any way to sort of pay down that debt uh, without forcing them in, you know, to another hour session or something like that. Yeah. Well, we are not going to talk about my least favorite topic of yeah. taxes today. So. <laughs> stay away. We can stay away from that. No, taxes are important, especially with financial planning. So it, we can we could definitely dive into that. But um, I'm curious for this individual in particular, because I, I love to unpack this stuff. I'm sure maybe somebody listening is even going through this or this thought has crossed their mind. Um, full transparency in my last business, actually, I grew to hate it. And I was uh, I was working only a few hours a week. Um, I was a true business owner, not an operator. And I still hated it. And I, not that I was thinking about doing DoorDash, but I was like, how do I get rid of this stupid ball and chain that I am tied to? Right. Um and I ended up selling it and moving on. But I think a lot of people find themselves in that scenario and maybe don't have that option, especially as a, a solopreneur or uh, as a private practice, because you are the product, right? So mm -hmm. in that scenario, did this person, did they have employees or were they trying to balance the running of the business and the operation of delivering the service? Yeah. So often, and it, it doesn't matter whether they have employees or not, this burnout risk is prevalent because of sort of the hours that they spend in front of either clients or their employees. 
But um, I will say this in this particular case, it was a solo person who had not sort of worked to build um, something beyond themselves. And that that does um, like it's so common in what I call like essentially service based self-employment where it's your hour that's creating the income and um, you're providing a service of some sort, whether it's, you know, writing or whatever. I used to be a writer. I also self-employed for many years, ended up hating it and do what I do now because I love it. Um, but it's also much more scalable business and I am able to eventually hire and eventually, um, you know, create income streams without having to actually be in front of it, uh, uh, of a screen or talking to someone. And so, uh, a part of that conversation is sort of figuring out what are they comfortable with doing? It's like, there's plenty of people I talk to who never, ever, ever would want to hire someone because they have no interest in managing anyone and that's fine. But then where else are you taking that income and investing for the long term? Um, you know, I always say there's three places to invest in America. You're either investing in the markets, you're investing in real estate or you're investing in business or businesses. And um, you need to sort of figure out what makes sense for you based on your risk profile, your goals, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I love that. And I'm actually, while, while you were uh, describing that situation, I'm actually thinking of um, a number of people actually who have been guests on this very show in the mm -hmm. past and who, who have found themselves in that very similar situation. So um, I am picturing a human being when we're having this conversation and I want to, I want to speak to them because this is a problem that I come across in, in consulting with some of our clients. Now our clients are typically seven, eight figure businesses. They have a team five to a hundred employees somewhere in there. This still happens. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're a solopreneur or not even me, like in that situation, I had about eight employees at the time when I hated the business. So this is not unique to being a solopreneur, but I want to talk to that person and that those group of people, what are these the ways that you kind of outline with your clients, you have uh, the market businesses, and I forget the third one, but I'm sure you will remind me of places real to invest. Estate. Yeah. Real estate, thank you. Yeah. How do you go about approaching that conversation? Because I would also assume that in that moment, they're so weighed down, whether they're actually in burnout or on the verge of it, that they may not even be able to fully comprehend what you're saying and think that long term. So, mm -hmm. what does this conversation look like? Yeah, and you know, I say like investing or saving for the long term or whatever, in the sense of like that's the tools that have been created, and so that's kind of how we sort of uh, converse about them. But really, we're, what we're talking about is financial independence, right? And so, when you are sort of tired of that business the reason you couldn't just immediately dump it is because you weren't financially independent of that business at that point. Um, and so what we need to figure out, and this is, this is a long-term conversation. It's not like I've met you 20 minutes and let's, uh, let's figure out your life situation. It's more understanding who, like my clients, I get to know them. It's a long sort of, sort of a situation where we're understanding what they want in life, how they want to go about it, and like what their values are and those things. Because like we talk about money as sort of um, like numbers, but really that, that money is really just a, indicative of how we're spending our time and how we want to spend our life. And so we first need to kind of figure out what that is. Um, that will give us guidance towards um, other tools. Like, you know, most people should be investing in the markets in some way. I call it... Um, like the passive income stream that uh, most entrepreneurs should have just because it is something that's building, it's there, you're not using it now, but it's down the line, you'll use it at some point. Um, outside of that, then it's figuring out where do you want to go? Do you want to turn this like private practice into a 30 person business that you could sell one day? Or does that not seem interesting to you? And instead you want to create um, online courses that could, okay, how do we create space for you? So you can create space in your cash flows to sort of look at that. Um, or let's say um, you're just, you know, I don't want to talk to anyone else, but you know what I could do is we could build retreats. And so instead of having, you know, so many days a year where I'm sitting in front of clients, I'm actually building like three or four days out of the year where I'm seeing a ton of clients. And so now we're adjusting sort of, the income flow there. 
um, and rethinking sort of how we're operating for whatever that personality is. Yeah, and this is a much larger discussion than just finances, which I, I like and I yeah. I appreciate also as a, a COO because you can't <laughs> yeah. you can't get out of the operation of the business if you're not going to change anything. But you, I don't think you you can also look at long term wealth planning if you're not going to design your business around it too. If you're right. like right. you said, all those different uh, avenues of revenue streams, and there's millions more probably that you can come up with depending on the individual. You have to be thinking about how your life and your lifestyle tie into your particular business and delivery of the brand promise to your customers. So I love this approach that you take. And I'm curious when, when you're working with people at first and, you know, regardless of really where they're at, what is, what does their transformation look like as you start to uh, go through this conversation? Because I, I would also assume that none of them have really, or most of them have not thought about these different options when you present them. Or they just don't have the confidence to do it, yeah. um, and, or they feel like they don't have the space to do it. Um, the truth is, I want them to get to a point where they're just so excited about what they're doing that they don't need to to lean on me to do it. Because, like, I'm a financial planner. Like, I will work with your investments. I will work with your long term estate planning. I'll work with um, other parts of your financial life. Help you sort of figure out the home you want to buy. That sort of stuff. Um, eventually I want you to move the business into something that you've taken control of and you understand and sure I'll run numbers about sort of how to invest into a new employee or something like that. But like you're the business owner and I want them to sort of take that ownership. And when a client comes in and they're completely, you know, drained, don't know how they're going to continue on. And then a few meetings later, they're coming in with ideas like how do we sort of figure out this or, Ooh, I'm thinking of hiring two more people because I just saw the profit numbers. And I think that would just do wonders for me. That's, that's exciting because that's taking ownership of the thing. And then they're also getting out of that burnout state. I mean, they're truly like finding what they actually enjoy about this business as opposed to uh, just only fo focus and stuck on the parts that they really dislike. And that's what burns most people out is just the yeah. stuff you don't like. It's, it's the, the running of the business. If you got into this because you love delivering the service and, and being the therapist, being the lawyer, whatever it is, it's the running of the business that probably drains you. So getting that off your plate probably makes a huge difference relatively quickly. So, yeah. um, well, let me put this on the screen here. Cause you, you've written a number of eBooks, uh, mm -hmm. that the, the listener can go ahead and take advantage of. Um, can you give me the, the overview of what those books are about? Yeah, it's really what we've been talking about today. So it's, it's okay, you are either a private practice owner or you're self-employed um, and things are looking good for you. How do you turn that income into long-term security, long-term wealth, and then breaking those three strategies down, either investing in the markets, investing in, the, in real estate or investing in business businesses. Um, and the ebook really breaks that strategy down. Um, it's free. So feel free to go there, put your email in and I'll send it along to you. I love it. That'll be in the show notes down below, wherever you're watching or listening, there's a couple different ones. So we'll, we'll spell that out, which ones, which in the show notes, you can go grab it. Um, but I'm curious, we've been talking about all these different things, which, you know, makes a ton of sense. And I'm, I'm excited to hear that you, you kind of break this down for your clients in this particular way and help them look long-term and build a business around a little life, the lifestyle they want. But I can't stop thinking about DoorDash from the beginning. Can you, you don't have to use names, you don't have to use companies, anything like that. But can you tell us the story of, of what that transformation looked like? Yeah. So it really, basically what I did for them was show, okay, this is how much you make per client. And they were thinking of doing this as there's something in private practice ownership or running a private practice where you can either use insurance companies to get clients or you can go private pay. And she was like, I'm only gonna go private pay and then I'm gonna like supplement with like DoorDash and whatnot. And so I broke down the numbers of what it looks like if she goes, you know, 75% private pay to insurance and how many hours left she had in a work year to focus on other things, whether it's growing her business or just taking time off. Um, and uh, by doing that, she sees like how much uh, time she had if she just did a mix of insurance panels and private pay 
And then I show her, okay, this is what life is like if you're gonna go DoorDash. And it just basically shows her that not only does she have not no hours to herself at this point, she has negative hours to herself. And it, it, it honestly, what it did was free her mind because she would be sitting there being like, maybe I should do this, maybe I should do that, maybe I should do this. But then she saw it in the numbers and really what mattered to her, which was the hours that she had left in the day and realized that uh, that was not the way to go. And so she doesn't even think about it anymore. And she's more focused on more high level sort of tactics to uh, create that security for herself. Yeah, that's crazy. So what was the what was her outcome? Like, did she did she was she more energized going to work? Did she have those hours to take vacations. I said she, I realized we didn't, it doesn't matter, but <laughs> this person- This happens to be a, a woman, but okay. um, yeah. What was the and, transformation? Yeah, no worries. And uh, the outcome is that she is getting it together. Uh, she had debt, it, that debt is starting to decrease. Um, she, had, um, she had reached a point where she was kind of giving up on her business or just really tired and not wanting and she's now uh, seeing growth in her business. She's not someone necessarily who's going to go out and start a huge group or anything like that. But I think in time, she's going to start doing like group sessions. She's going to start doing retreats, those sorts of things. That's really going to like bolster her. And so that's the funny thing about financial planning is I work with clients who, you know, have $3 million practices who are going to be selling their business in order to like afford their future. Um, but I also have just individuals who are just trying to like make simple gains and I can get excited about both situations <laughs> very easily. And so it's very exciting to see uh, like her growth over the, the time span that I've worked with her. I mean, I can too. That's why I'm so curious about this story because you've given somebody their life back really. When, yeah. when you're in that state of burnout, you can't think about anything except the moment in front of you and really the past, because you're probably dwelling on the past a lot. Mm -hmm. And and it's like, what is that next step? You're almost paralyzed. So you essentially in both situations, you you gave somebody their life back, you gave their business back, and not only them, but their clients too. That yeah. now her clients are getting a much better service because you've kind of cleared the waters and said, No, here's what's possible. And she can go and, and take that on. So I think what you're doing is phenomenal. And I, I just, I can't wait to hear more stories. Hopefully you come back and you have a, a dozen more stories. Hey, more. Anytime, anytime, plenty of stories. I love, I love the stories. It's it's honestly why I do what I do now. And it's why I love this job that I do now. So that's fantastic. It's so cool. So what I want to do is ask you for a question. I am a firm believer here at what if we believe that powerful questions get powerful answers. There's a giant lit up obnoxious question mark behind me. We kind of live this philosophy out every day. And I'm curious in terms of income to wealth, that's what we're talking about here and avoiding burnout. What is a powerful question that you would want the listener to walk away from this episode with and think about for the next day, for the next week in order to get on this path to long-term financial success? I mean, I honestly would start with that big question. Like, what do you want in life? Like, um, and by life, I mean, uh, like, what do you want in your business? What do you want in uh, your personal life? Everything. So they're all working towards whatever that future you see for yourself. And that future does not have to be like years and years down the line. You'd be shocked at how many people I speak to who are just like, I want to go on a two week vacation. And, you know, that is not a too difficult of a thing to sort of plan for in, in the long scheme of things. And so really think about where you want to be, who you want to help, how you want to live your life, and then structure your business, your finances, your life around that. I love that. That's such a powerful question. If I may ruin it completely. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. My, my wife, maybe you can resonate. My wife made me watch The Notebook with her. And there's a part of the scene in the movie where uh, Ryan Gosling, I think it's Ryan Gosling, uh, mm -hmm. says to the girl in the movie, what do you want? What do you want? And mm -hmm. I always, whenever somebody says, what do you want? I, I think of that line in the movie uh, because we can't usually tell people what we want. We can only tell them what we don't want. And it's yeah. not the same question. It's not the same answer. So ponder that question. I, I really love it. Ryan, thank you so much for being here and being a phenomenal guest. I appreciate it. Have a good one.
All right, for those of you watching, listening, wherever you are, I'm sorry if I ruined the question and the episode, but go ask yourself that question. What do you want? What do you really want your business to do for you, for your lifestyle, more importantly? And then somebody like Ryan can go help you with that. So take advantage of the downloads, the eBooks, they're in the show notes. Everything's down below. Make sure you subscribe. We wanna see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch tomorrow. Thanks for being here.